friends and welcome back to my DIY channel. Um, what you're seeing in front of you probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but we are in the winter and I've already had to use mine. We are going to make emergency candles using just all vegetable shortening. You don't want to use uh, pre-creamed or whipped or anything that has animal fats in it. You want to make sure you're using just all vegetable shortening. It doesn't have to be Crisco brand. It can be the cheapest you buy. We're also going to use a couple of these jars from the Dollar Tree. Um, you can also use pint mason jars and instead of going online and ordering candle wicks, which can be very costly, I'm just going to take some of these Dollar Tree candles. Normally, I go to a thrift store. I buy candles uh, for a quarter a package, kind of like this, or there's only one candle for a quarter or something like that. And I break them break the candlestick and take the wick out. So that's kind of going to be the first thing that we're going to do today is take that apart. You're going to need a good sturdy handled um, container or a kettle if you want to put it on the stove but you want to be careful that you don't burn the shortening or catch a fire started. Um, you're going to need something to hold the wick in place if you're using a candle that doesn't have a base or a wick that doesn't have a base. So I just simply use um, paper clips. Um, I'm also going to try out this that I got the Dollar Tree. It is a chalk writer um, marker and I'm going to use these just to kind of decorate my, can uh, my candle jar with. And you're going to need something to hold the wick up out of the jar with. So I've got these dowels that I had painted for a craft. So the first thing I'm going to do, obviously, is I need to get the wicks out of these candles. These do not have a base, but you can see that the wick is not visible, so we need to fix that. So I have my cutting board, and we're going to need to slice off the very bottom until we expose the wick. So I'm just going to work my way around the candle till I can see the end of the wick. And there it is. We break this candle into manageable lengths, just like that. Probably about four pieces. And we're going to simply pull this candle like so, so that we can get the wick out. Now when you get down to this last piece, it's going to be a bit of a pain in your neck usually, because this wick is tight in there. Split your candle like that, and the wick will come out. So if you can't pull the last little bit out, don't worry so much. Make sure it's laying level, keep yourself safe, and just gently push the end of your knife in, and you'll be able to pry the candle apart. Now that you have your wick out, you're going to measure your candle to your jar, your wick to your jar. And this jar, I'll be able to get two wicks for these jars. The ends that are neat I'm going to add to this right here. You're just going to simply take one of these and we're going to slide it so that it's pinched. If you can see that. Like that. I'm going to slide it back down. And this is actually going to set inside of here like so. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take some because we can always add more and melt it. We're just going to take some shortening. 
put it in a stable container that will not um, burn you or the handle won't flop over because you don't want this burning grease to get on you, obviously. I have roughly, not quite a full two cups. I'm going to add just a little bit because we all know that once we melt shortening, it's not going to be quite um, what it is when it's solid. I'm going to go ahead and melt this in the microwave. Um, I will put on the screen about how long it took to melt this. And then I'll come back and talk to you about um, why shortening and how long these candles last while it's melting. Why am I using vegetable shortening to make candles with for emergency purposes? They burn a very long time. They, if you were to stick just one of these candles like this, inside of this jug of shortening and um, just light it, you know, cut it so it's the same height. You don't want to have it sticking way up over. But if you were to just cut it the right height, stick it in here and push the shortening around it and just ignite it when you have power outage and you're going to be without power for days and days and leave this lit make sure you always put these on a plate because they do get very hot you don't want to ruin your furniture or possibly even you could start a fire if it gets too hot um so these will burn for days and days and days where a regular candle will burn for a couple of hours to maybe a few hours and then you're without light you do have the seven day candles, those tall little skinny ones um, that you can buy for a dollar. But if you're in an emergency pinch and you need a candle and you have shortening in your cupboard, even if you were to take this, pack this tight with, um, even if you have a partial candle in your house, Put that candle in there, pack the shortening tight around it, light that candle, you will be set to go. What we're doing today is we're going to have pre-made candles ready to go by heating up the shortening, making a candle, and these are great to give for gifts. I've given them for gifts this Christmas, and people enjoyed getting them. And you know what? When our power went out New Year's Day, guess what? I had mine lit for four hours and you would not know that it was lit that long. Let me go get it for you. This is the candle that I made. Um, it is just in a like a half pint uh, jelly jar and it sat in my bathroom. It was going for at least four hours. Our power was out for over five. Um, I got up. I finally just went ahead and lit it so that I had light in all of my rooms. And yeah, there's the jar. It re-solidifies or yeah, re-solidifies after you blow the candle out. So um that is the greatest thing about using shortening candles. It only got um maybe liquefied down to about here and that was it in five hours or four hours that it burned, not five. My power was out for five hours. Other size candles that I made, um, I made these out of moonshine jars. And the only problem with these little jars is they are too narrow. And the heat, because they, these do get hot, this actually started to bubble. And that's probably not a very good thing. And the jar got extremely, extremely hot. Um, so hot that it was way too uncomfortable to touch. So be careful when you go to make these that you do not use a narrow top jar. Make sure that any candle that you make has a wide opening so that you don't have to worry about that. Now, let's go ahead and get our candles made. This is in the microwave, total about three and a half minutes. And that is because I added a 
big old dollop more because what I had in there only gave me a little shy, right around a cup and a half, right around there. So I added a big old heap and dollop more. And this is where you have the decision to make of adding, and you want to make sure you use essential oil, not anything water-based. If you want to add a food coloring, please make sure you use it for candle making or something like that. Don't add the food coloring that you use to make, um, like for the, the boxes of stuff that you get over in the food section because that is water-based and we all know water and oil does not mix. It will make your candles look terrible. I will tell you, I know there's women out there that use this stuff and they make their candles and they say they smell beautiful. They may smell pretty, but when they burn, they don't have that smell. They only smell pretty while they're sitting out um, or when you first open the jar. So for me to waste as much as it took me to make um, roughly two sizes like this, a hundred drops, it's not cost effective. Just to smell it when I first open the jar, no. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to make some plain Jane. Because after all, these are for emergency. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out first by, and the reason I have the setting here is I want to, to make sure that when I pour this, I'm not making a mess. I have a couple clothespins. And we're going to put our stick up here. And we're just going to bend this over. And now we're going to do the same with this one. Now to keep these from rolling around while I'm doing this, I have placed some um, blue painter's tape. And while this is still quite warm, and to kind of steady these, I'm going to slowly pour the shortening in. So these jars hold about one cup a piece. This one is a little bit fatter than that one, so it held a little bit more. And so I'm going to let them sit here a second, then I'm going to put them in the refrigerator. At least for four hours, better off to have them in the refrigerator overnight. And I'll be back with you in a minute. Good morning, friends. <laughs> for you, it's just been like a split second. For me, it's been overnight. Um, I did take these out late last night before I went to bed, like 10 o'clock, um, to let the jars get to room temperature because they were kind of frosty and I wanted to hot glue some jute twine around them to decorate them. And I'm going to go ahead, and before I start, I had one of my friends that watches my videos, she doesn't ever really comment, say, hey, she sent me a message on Facebook. You did not show us your coffee cup in your last video. I didn't know anybody really cared. So today, I'm drinking out of my Lambert's cup. And, man, I tell you, I prefer the high-end coffees. <laughs> That's, like, I don't know, from Walmart. And it's terrible, absolutely terrible coffee. So, we're going to go ahead and remove all this tape. And be careful not to yank on your, um, whatever you call this. I'm going to go ahead and unhook it. I'm going to get rid of the stick. It's in my way. I am going to go ahead and trim the wicks. I don't want him leaning on my black thing. And I'm going to go ahead and decorate both of these. Two of these little wooden hearts.
and be made on the other. I'm not so sure I like this. It's more like a crayon. And I'm just going to wrap jute twine around and hot glue it in place. And I'm not worrying about making this so that it's like perfectly wrapped. I'm just letting it go wherever it wants to go. I'm going to do that with both of these. Now I am going to take these and I'm going to make kind of a, just like a, she, like a knot here to make a little bow out of the ones that came with it. Now I'm going to tuck, cut these really long tails off. First, tie this to the jar so that if I want, I can remove the tag and put something different. I'm going to go through the front because I'm going to have the bow. And tie this behind it. the bow on with a little bit of hot glue right there at the top there's that one and then I'm going to do the same with this one trim off your tails turn your heart around He wants to have a little bit of a twist. That's okay. And we'll put the lid on that jar. And there you have it. Now there is one thing that I want to let you know. When you let these... Um, Reset. You might want to make sure that your wick does not fall off to the side. I forgot to let my wick fall, uh, pull my wick back up so that it doesn't fall off to the side. It's a real easy fix. You can stick um, a toothpick or just something down in there just to kind of edge it back up every now and then while it's resetting. Um, it really doesn't hurt the candle. It's just that my wick when the jar when the candle re uh you know when it hardened back up the the wick kind of slid off to the side it is what it is it happens it's not going to hurt the candle or how it burns it just may make that side of the jar a little warmer than the other if you ever use these um, make sure you put them on a plate or something because when it burns down to like down really close, they do get hot. You don't want to um, destroy your furniture or possibly even cause a fire. Please be smart about using candles and open flames. Um, everyone, thank you so very much for watching. I hope that this helps you. If you're ever in a situation where you need a candle or... Um, you're without power and for some reason you don't have one available you always you know keep a can of shortening on hand because these will last you may burn out your candles quick this will last forever like i said this one here burned for four hours and it was only filled to here that's all that was actually used out of the four hours everybody have a safe and wonderful day and I will talk to you in a little bit. I'm going to show you how these look set up. Thank you guys.